workshops and guest speakers to networking and conferences. Um, honestly, I've been to a couple conferences in the last year, and it is the best experience I've ever had in my life. The amount that you learn um, from this organization and the amount that I've personally got from it with my time here has been invaluable. Um, I've got job connections. I've got internships, ways that I'm going to be able to get ahead in the professional world. Hey, come in and grab some food, have a seat. We've got ginger teriyaki there and pizza. Oh, and Alex here. All right, and so, um, so I really, really encourage you all to join us. And we have our meetings every Tuesday here. This is our first big meeting of the quarter. We'll have some other ones going on throughout. And so that's a little bit about the club. Do any of you have any questions, just something, any concerns, anything you wanted to know about? So you said we meet every Tuesday? Yes, we have our meetings just about every Tuesday uh, right here. And so if you, you know, friend us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, you'll get all the updates about that. We also have a, um, a Facebook group for all of our paid members where we post internships and updates about meetings, events, fundraisers, all that jazz. And you have a website. We do. We have, we have a website with a, a blog on it. So we encourage everybody Writers. to write for that. We'll be, we've got a couple of blog posts lined up ready to go. Cool. We're, we're pushing for, for more people to, uh, to write for that. You know, it's a good publishing experience. Okay. And it gets recognized by the National Society. Yes, you do. So, the National yeah. Society. You're on it. Yes. Yep. Um, I'm just wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about the membership and what kind of benefits you have Okay. Okay, so uh, the membership is for a full year. The deadline for us to turn it in is November 1st, so we want it a little bit sooner for that than that. It's $75. 25 of that goes to our chapter to help us uh, throw events and go to conferences. 50 of it goes to our national organization. And a lot of a couple of the membership benefits include you get access to online internship postings that are exclusive to PRSSA members. Um, I've got a PRSSA email where there's uh, local uh, recruiters for internships. I get maybe one or two internship emails a week that I post on our group that um, are open to anyone to apply for. You get discounted, uh, you get discounted registration for the conferences. So right now we're going to uh, San Francisco for the big old national conference, which is the, in October, October 12th we're leaving. And then there's always a regional conference we try and get everybody go to, which is really a blast. Hey there. And with the regional conference last year it was in Reno, the year before it was in Fullerton. And um, if you're a paid member, we usually try and spend as much money to make sure you go for as cheaply as possible. So last year we usually play, pay for the hotel room, um, and try and pay for either your flight or travel along with it. And you get a discounted registration for the, um, for the from the organization, from the national organization, that is. And then um, the networking, you get a shirt. Oh, you get a discount on the shirts. Um, we have these awesome shirts. We're actually going to be selling a inverse version of them, so they're going to be white with a blue logo on them. Uh, we're working on getting those together. And they're normally $18. You get a discounted price of 15 for them. And also the, the networking. Um, I came in and joined this club as a sophomore. I didn't know much about PR. I'd taken a couple of basic comm classes, but that was it. Um, and then I started you know, meeting people in the club. And then the next year rolled around, and one of the past people members was, hey, I got this great internship opportunity. I think you'd be good for it. And it was at the Collins College, which is the hospitality school on campus. I ended up getting that position and working um, and getting my internship credit done for graduation a year early, along with it being a paid internship. So um, really, really incredible benefits from being a member. And also just the networking. You go to a conference and you meet PR students from all around the country. And there we all have the same mentality all going forward. And you really get to meet all of your competition and all of your colleagues moving forward after graduation. Great speakers. Yes, great speakers. Great professional connections. We met Cindy at the Fullerton mm -hmm. conference and just kind of grabbed yeah. on her and kept her with us ever since. Does that answer your question? All right. Um, are there any other? Uh, let's see. I'd like to real quick just introduce um, our executive board. PRSSA. Yeah. 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 Come on in. Grab some food. We've got pizza there. We've got uh, salad and chicken teriyaki. And. Um, if not, that's right. Just have a seat. <laughs> All right. So, um, along with 
being a member of the club, you can also be a member of our executive board and do a number of things to help our club strive. I'm the president. I don't think I mentioned that before. I'm the president, and last year I was the vice president of membership, and this year's vice president of membership is Ali Bevinger. Uh, a little bit about yourself? Uh, fourth year, obviously PR. An interesting fact, because you know what we were going to say, yeah. uh, I lived in New Zealand for six months last year. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and you're writing a blog about it, right? Good. Yeah. No, well, about the rugby in New Zealand. About <laughs> uh, rugby in New Zealand. Well, uh, my name is Sean Graven. I'm a fourth year public relations major graduating in spring. And an interesting fact about myself, um, I'm really, really into the craft beer scene. So I actually have my own blog, and I created a website that catalogs all of the Southern California breweries with the interactive map and stuff. It's called SoCal Brew Guide, and so that's pretty cool. All right, and then our the sort of work, workhorse of our team, Andrew is the director of communication. He made a lot of this event today happen. Uh, yeah, my name is Andrew, like you said, um, the director of communication, uh, senior PR student, obviously. Um, one interesting fact, I couldn't really think of anything interesting, so uh, I guess it would just be that I've seen like all the science channel shows, like through the wormhole and everything, a million times. So. <laughs> <laughs> so ask Andrew if you have any science questions. <laughs> all right, and then we have our director of fundraising, Lexi, who's getting together a lot of fundraisers going on in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm Lexi, fourth year PR major, of course, and um, director of fundraising. An inst interesting fact about me is I love sports. I football, I'm a football fanatic. I could throw a football better than most guys. Yeah. <laughs> you go, so girl. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and could you, real quick, do you want to tell everybody about our two upcoming? Oh, yeah. And our two upcoming fundraisers is next Thursday, we're going to be selling snow cones out either in front of the library or in front of the, the marketplace. And um, a dollar each because it's been hot and trying to raise money for our conferences that we're going to be going to. And at the end of the month, on the 27th, we're trying to get a pancake breakfast at the Applebee's in San Dimas. So ten dollars, you get a pancake breakfast, and we're going to try to have some raffle prizes there too. So look forward to some emails and stuff like that. Keep me on the list. I'll try to make some. All right, and then our director of special projects, Natalie Gross. Hello. 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 Okay, come in, have a seat. And then um, we are missing one eboard member here today. Her name is Hannah Dorley, and she's our director of finance. Um, she actually has to be the, there's a thing called class council, because we're all in the College of Letters, Arts, and Social Sciences. And so they have meetings at the same time as we do, and we have to send one member. And we usually have a designated person, but um, unfortunately, our designated person got a fan, her name is Ana, and she got a fantastic internship. Um, but now she can't be a member of our board because she has to go every Tuesday. So we're actually looking for a new class council representative. So if any of you are interested in gaining some leadership experience and maybe getting an in on the e-board to have a bigger position next year, come talk to any of us, and we'd love to have you as a part of our team. So, uh, yes. We're doing elections Yes, we'll be doing elections next week and posting about it on our Facebook page. So anyone interested, talk to any of us after the meeting, give us your name, and come next week, Tuesday, same time, same place. On that note, um, if you haven't already, please add us on Facebook, um, on follow us on Twitter, you know, we're on Instagram, pretty much anything that, that you can uh, you think of reading on there, Google Plus, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You guys have anything else to add? I think I, I, think I hit every now. All right, well, without further ado, I would like to introduce to you the wonderful, amazing oh, Miss Cindy Ronzo. <laughs> Sean told me today that we're really focused was on social media. And just to so somebody that, well, who's the Cindy girl? Why is she here? I, again, I met up with these hooligans, oh gosh, a couple years ago at Fullerton, and just love your enthusiasm and the interest here. And, their thirst for growing, and they've had me come in a few times last year to speak and kind of help advise you guys. I am a longtime PR girl. 
started uh, the sixth person hired at Fox Broadcasting Company. So remember, so you don't remember shows like Twenty One Jump Street or uh, Married with Children, yeah, yeah. Six yeah. Six and America's Most Wanted, and I know Two One Zero. I did all those shows. Lasted there fifteen years. From there, I went ahead in my own PR, PR department, Game Show Network, and then worked on Lifetime, and then. Now I have my own firm, and I'm basically right now I'm consulting. Um, I represent all the television writers in the country, and they have a convention twice a year. I'm working out of the Santa Monica offices of FearNet, which is a cable company of horror movies, and I'm in the Lionsgate building, so it's really fun to be there. And Twilight's done out of there, and I also am the LA rep for National Geographic Channel. So. I get to do be with some base jumpers and people with slash line, and I get to all some science Skype stuff that Andrew would love. Um, so what I want to throw out to you is that I am here for you to help you in any capacity. I got my start because people helped me. Again, like me on my page, contact me anyway. I'll be like, hey, how can I help you? If you want to come shadow me one day at work, you're welcome to do that. I want to open it up to you guys and come to Santa Monica, and come sit in a meeting, whatever experience you need. I do throw screenings. I just had one last week at the Paley Center. I will make them available to you. Whatever I have access to, I will bust down any door that I can to help you. So the only the reason why I'm not helping you is because you've never asked. <laughs> so I am here. I am very, I don't brag, but I am very well connected. I make the most out of any introduction that I do meet, and I keep them in my head, and I figure out, so if I can't, if the, I, there's some way that I can help connect someone else to them, I, I can't. So I am very good about being a connector, and I will be your friend for life. I, since we are talking about social media, I brought in one of my, one of my closest brain trusts, and a man that I've learned tremendously from, Jason Tucker. I asked him to come here today because you cannot be a social media expert or be good at social media without being social. And we can't do this all on our own and you can't be in a box and learn it. I belong to two social media clubs, that's where I met Jason. You have to spitball and brainstorm ideas. I came in here right away and asked, okay, who's on Instagram, what are you guys using? And so I'm going to have Jason kind of throw in some um, statements as well. He's extremely uh, amazing, the WordPress developer and coder and just has many websites as a Disneyland fanatic, so I can talk to him about that. But he's one of the people that I often still share content off of his page. And that's one of the things that I recommend for you is how exciting is your Facebook page that others are taking your content. I'm not talking about these dumb kitty photos and you know these inspirational sayings, but are you guys shooting some interesting photos of where you're at or are you posting the press releases that you are writing? Am I seeing your original work? If you're into food, am I seeing these pictures? Do I see you going to concerts on your pages? I often grab stuff. Jason finds some very interesting articles. He's well read. And he set up his readers to find these kinds of things. So I don't know, Jason, if you want to. Sure. Uh, yeah. What, I, well, you, you're, you love posting. Yeah, I use uh, Google Reader for everything. Um, that's how I read the web. I don't go to people's websites. I don't really care what their design is, which is funny considering I build people's websites. <laughs> I don't care about their design. But um, really what it comes down to is how do I consume all that content? How do I figure out what's good and bad? How do I curate it? And then how do I put it back out there for people to, to use? I do all of that using Google Reader. So if you're not using Google Reader, you have a Google account, which you probably do. You probably have a Gmail account. Log in, hit the little reader button, and then start looking through Google Reader and figuring out how to use that. And what's the best way to be able to to be able to absorb that, you know, all the content that's out there on the web, without having to, you know, spend time and energy going to each and every single website with all your bookmarks and all that stuff. And you know, and why is that important? Okay, why are you guys in college? It's to get a great job, right? Your whole goal, okay, your whole goal of why you're here today. And why you're investing in this education is that you want to get a kick, you know what, job. Oh, yeah, kick ass job. <laughs> <laughs> so, the way to do that, you have to be seen as an influencer. So, you have to become an influencer. Like I said, the hardest PR to do is your own. If you're on my pages, I think Jason can attest, even though it's my personal page, people know that I'm going to have some PR case study on there or something that I'm doing, something where you can learn. What am I learning about you? I do not use this as just a fluffy way to talk to my relatives. It is, I have reporters connected on my pages. That's why if you guys have content, I've got people from the New York Times and such, they can see it if you're on my page. 
So I can help you, and you can help me if I need to send out a story that needs to reach your age demo. I need to use you guys just as well. So I think you guys need to think about who you are, what is your personal brand, what is it that you want to say, what is your Facebook timeline cover convey about you. Yeah, you can switch it out to say it's a wedding you attended and things like that. I'm going to switch mine out to show that I'm speaking here today, okay, because I want that message to be sent. Sean's probably going to put out that he's here. Oh, yeah. Now, the other reason, one of the most underutilized tools in PR everywhere, I believe, is live streaming and podcasting. Jason is a, is the, is a fan and knows how to do it. He's been doing it for years. And you can see that's why I have him here, too, because he is taking this. And look at how easy this is now. And this is something you guys can add. Um, video is a number yeah. two searched oh, yeah. item on the web. Oh, and yeah. it is the most underutilized tool. And this is something you guys could try to integrate. And then the national chapter can see it. You, the thing is, you guys got to build up your local chapter as well. Mm -hmm. In some ways, you need to do your strategy and PR plan for you guys. So this is a start. So he has his website. And now it's we post it on YouTube. The people aren't here can see this again. Look at how easy this is. And this is stuff that you guys can do wherever you're at. You can do it from your iPhone. You can do it anywhere. You're your own publicist. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add anything? Sure. Well, um, I have a $100 webcam up on top there. And I have a $25 Walmart special uh, tripod. And um, between that and you know a couple grand worth of laptop here, I'm able to uh, <laughs> to stream it. But uh, like Cindy was saying, is uh, is you know being able to use a phone, you can get on. Uh, we're using Google Hangout right now, which is another Google, another Google product. It's part of Google Plus. It's super easy to set up. Um, I've done everything from churches to weddings to bar mitzvahs to you name it, all through Google through Google Hangout. And I don't have to take the time and energy to upload those videos up to YouTube. They all just automatically show up there. And if I wanted to have 10 people on here, I could have 10 people all interacting with one another. And I actually do that every week now. Um, have 10, 10 people in my industry um, get on there and do a roundtable discussion talking about you know, WordPress and web development and web design and all that sort of thing. And to be able to take that information and get it onto the website quickly and easily, it's a no-brainer. Well, why wouldn't you do it? So I recommend, so one thing in the past what kept people from using it is like Ustream and services like that would put an ad up. And it would be $350 to take that ad down. But by using Google Hangouts, as Jason said, and not allowing anyone in, you don't have an ad and it's now all the bugs are taken out of it. So, so look, okay, next time you guys have a fundraiser, you can, you can stream live from there. Your blog, start adding video now to your blogs. Do an introduction of who you are and having your video in there. That's one of my recommendations. I think, again, I think video, we all know how to use Facebook, we all know how to take our Instagram. I think we're not you know, utilizing video. Especially if you like sports, you should be like broadcasting, talking about, I just saw the, you know, the Dallas Bears game last night, nobody knew Dallas would come out, you know. So you could just talk about the Bears, how the Bears did. Blah, blah, blah. Great game. It was a great game. But again, you know, you guys can use this to your advantage. And again, to be an influencer, you need to have an opinion. So that's one thing I learned quickly. I had an internship at a sports radio um, station early on, and the guy asked me, do I, you know, the Angels or the Sox? I'm like, oh, they both have a, they both have a good season. He's like, no, no, no. You have to have a definite opinion so someone can then do a debate off of that. So just take a side wherever you're at. Don't just be toast in Switzerland. And that way people can <laughs> jump in and start the discussion. But don't make it mean-spirited or anything like that. But have your opinion. Be known. Like you, you want to know about fashion. You should be coming out and telling us what it is. Walk through Forever 21 and say what the great sales are going to be. Okay, tell them about your passion, what you built for Disney. Yeah, well, with Disney, uh, I built a thing called Overheard at Disneyland. So while you're at Disneyland, if you overhear somebody say something funny, silly, or weird, <laughs> while you're waiting in line, you pull out Twitter, bust it out on your phone, say, I overheard this person say such and such, and you use my hashtag, OHATDL. Overheard it, isn't it? And then it um, goes out onto my website. And then I have it at categorized and organized and, you know, quickly and easily. Oh. Yeah. So How much easy. traffic do you get if you're using that? Well, the hard part about Twitter is that Twitter doesn't want me to do what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> Twitter wants everything to stay on Twitter. So they're building these cool little pieces where you're able to embed Twitter information onto your website, and I'm slowly but surely starting to use that. Um, in terms of, like, uh, people going to the site, I... I advertise on the Twitter account um, five times a day. It automatically sends out a message saying, hey, I'm over at Disneyland. Check me out. Click on the link. You look at all my archives, not just seven days' worth of stuff that you know the Twitter gives you access to. 
think so, I yeah. wish I knew that earlier. I yeah, it, funny stuff in my head. <laughs> <I've> never heard. <laughs> and I do uh, overheard of Walt Disney World as well. Um, if I spoke French, I'd totally do one for Paris, France. But uh, you know, I'm totally but surely working my way. Through. <laughs> <laughs> but this is an application you can do anywhere. Overheard at at our campus. Overheard here. I don't know. Yeah. It's not hard. Get to know people that know how to develop. It's very important. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're, next stop is we're going to make some connections over at the business yeah, department. Exactly. We call it developers. Definitely. He's my secret weapon, definitely. Okay, Adi, yeah, I want to throw it to questions. You want to, what do you want to um, do? Well, before we open up to questions, I just had an Go intriguing idea. So you're talking about integrating multimedia, right, a lot of video. And then also using it to meet people. What do you? What is your opinion on like your thirty-second elevator speech? Oh, so posting important. it on YouTube. I think I'd rather have. We can host it on YouTube, but have do you have your own website? I mean, where is mm -hmm. it going to point to? They point to yeah, yeah. Well, your YouTube, YouTube, YouTube can facilitate your website. Everybody has to own the URL, right? Do you have it? Do you have your name and your URL? Or if you don't need a website, just have it. Get as many of those. Platforms that you can of your names, yes. Domain names. Number one rule of thumb, wouldn't you say? Yeah. There's a website called Namecheck, N-A-M-E-C-H-K.com. You can just type in your name, and it'll give you a list of all the different websites that have your name either available or already taken. And I would I would say that's a great, I know I haven't done that. It's a good idea. You can have it attach it to your LinkedIn, have it attached it to everything that you are. Um, that certainly helps. But again, it helps that you have an elevator speech. More importantly, a lot of people don't have one. Does everybody know what elevator speech is? Do you want to describe that? I'm sorry, to me, what was your name? My name is Liz. Liz. So Liz, if I came and I said, hi Liz, how, how can I help you? You'd say, oh, I just want a job when I get out of school. Oh. And I'm like, I can't help you. That doesn't tell me anything. You want to be a car washer, you want to flip pizzas. <laughs> Vagueness drives me crazy. If you guys know me, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. It's like, I can't help you if you don't know. That's why I tell people, I don't care if you're a president of a company, I can't help you. It's like, tell me, you don't need to know, I, I would love to have something in the music industry. I'm OK with an entry level position. I'd like to live in Southern California. I, I'd rather be around jazz than, than I know, hard rock, blah, blah, blah. That helps me, oh, OK, I know someone so, so here and there. Or at least, even if you're in the elevator yeah. and you don't know a person, they're chatting, they say, what do you do? I said, well, I'm actually a student at Cal Poly, but I'm studying this with hopes to become that. Because you don't know if that person has an aunt or an uncle that actually does that. You never know who people know. Yeah. The, the, Everyone is important, no matter their rank, level, anything. You had a question? Oh, I was just going to say, I was on a flight, and I was stuck on the tarmac for two hours talking to the guy next to me. Turns out he works for one of the biggest PR firms in the country. Guess who has a business card? <laughs> yes. And what have you done with it since? Well, I emailed him a couple Perfect. times. Perfect. That's it. Good. So, hey, it was great. Yep, good, good, good. Yes. I was at a party for my uncle, and I was getting up talking to the lady, and it turns out she works for Interscope Records, which is like, I wasn't so getting never know. Me. So she gave me her name and email, and so when I'm referring to her, she told me to call her. It's like, you never know, just always be friendly, and talk to people, and let them know what you want to do, and you know, what you represent, and you never know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh yeah, you start as a PA. Everybody knows how to be that. You got to start. You start getting to be a PA, and you start working your way up, and you start meeting people on the set. And I start seeing it on your page. But can I see some original content of yours? Are you a writer? What what part? What did, what do you like? Do you like shooting? Um, well, I work on a movie set. Okay. For, um, as a production assistant. Good. And then I um, meet people. Then. I guess I did his um, audio. Like I worked okay. with the files for him. Okay. So you're just starting. Yeah. It'll come. I don't know just how stay there. Better. Just soak everything in because even though you want to be something, but you may not know of another job while you're there, you're like, oh, I like this better. Yeah. Don't put yourself in a box, number one, okay, guys? No matter what it is that you want to be, it's okay if you end up in something else. I give you that freedom. Because I'm, I'm morphing and changing. I never thought I'd be this. I never thought I'd work at a horror network. It's crazy. But I'm having a blast. And I'll get to celebrate Halloween or have fun. But, <laughs> yeah, Halloween's going on. Yeah, it's fun. But seriously, the, the one thing that my takeaway from my college experience was a graduate, the honors, blah, blah. So at the end, 
they called us in and we sat with all the professors and they all, every professor went around the room and said what they graduated in, and, and it was nothing what they ended up doing. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that was so freeing to me, you know, like, yeah, you have this education, but again, if you want to be a bass jumper, go be a bass jumper. If you want to be a rock and roll musician, you guys, you just experience you take won't apply to any. Or a movie producer. Or a movie producer. But with okay. your passions, I want to see come out of you. Because we're all unique. We're, I don't want to see cookie cutter. I want to see everybody's pages should show. I'm into auto mechanics. He's in the podcast and in the tech stuff. I know what to look for here. Sean, I'm going to look for craft beer stuff. I don't even know about this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's awesome. You're allowed still to be you. But you do it in a little professional little. And then they write your bios. That's kind of telling. You have to give yourself that assignment. And that's your elevator speech. Yeah. And just to uh, take a quick step back, just so you know, the idea behind an elevator speech is, say it's a, a speech to describe yourself and what you want to do professionally in the time it takes to of an elevator ride. So say you're in an elevator seconds. and suddenly a movie producer <laughs> uh, walks in there and you introduce yourself and give him your pitch and he might be able to hook you up with somebody else. So Sean, what, what would you like to do? Um, well, I'm a fourth year public relations student. I'm graduating this spring, and I'd really like to do PR for small businesses, specifically um, local breweries. <laughs> Tells him what he wants to do, right? Mm -hmm. I've got experience in social media as well as magazine writing and branding. And I just online. finished working with Edison. Uh -huh. I I'm that still in. working with there Edison. There you go. Actually. Add that in. Throw in the names of the companies. You say the kind of companies you want to work for. I like to work for Apple. I want to work for Netflix, I want Amazon, I want to get these new content people. I love this new frontier. And there's a world of opportunity out there for you guys. TV content is changing. It's not always on TV now anymore. Uh, you guys are talking about incorporating multimedia and the use of video. And it seems like the trend now there's on YouTube is for video bloggers to kind of make it seem like they have a real relationship with their audience and it's kind of their friend. If you want to have kind of a professional persona still, how do you balance that, like personal letting them into your personal life and being their friend, but still maintaining kind of a positive and professional image? Something you want like young people to see and a and an employer. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, is it like a Disney? T I mean, what kind? What would young? <laughs> what do you? I mean, what would be kind of offensive that would? I think, look at you, you're so professionalized. I can't see you doing anything that would be like crazy <laughs> embarrassing, right? I mean, well, I feel like you're saying, okay, in, yeah. order, in order to like get a lot of YouTube hits, you kind of. Oh, like, like dance in a crazy costume or well, something I mean, like it's that. It's like more like how you talk and stuff. Like sometimes you might like throw in a joke like about a boyfriend or whatever, but I'll just name the employer that we need to know that. Oh, I think. Yeah. I mean, I'm writing more comedy now than ever in my press releases right now. I'm having a blast. I'm working on Doomsday Preppers a little bit right now. I'm writing some fun stuff for them. I mean, I think if taking in the right context, people that are viewing this, it would be, if you weren't unique and original and relevant, it would be silly if you were stiff in a video that wasn't set for that. So I think the right place and the right time, yeah. Because if you're a comedy writer, I need to see that. You, you, you just be yourself. I mean, you're not going to be drunk in your pants. I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather see that than those different memes that come up. And that doesn't take much creativity. I want to, unless it's really funny. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's some good ones, but. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know but I think, I think you're going to be fine. I don't know what would be over the line, you think. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not really in the professional world yet, so I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's a good start. To, we're starting now, um, right. you know, going through and looking at your social media already, seeing what things you've spoken about in the past. Uh, I'm not saying to go through and like remove everything that you've talked about. I mean, everybody's human, but um, but definitely go through and kind of look at what are you talking about? What's some of the things that you focus on a lot, and maybe start focusing more on those types of things. And you know, putting those things on YouTube, Vimeo, whatever your you know, wherever your passions lie in terms of social media stuff. Now I've said this before to him, so he's not going to kill me too much. But he's like an almost an oversharer for me. Oh, <laughs> he yeah, is totally. Always <laughs> on my stream. It's like here's my kids kicking a ball, and here's my kids and the dog, the dog, the dog. <laughs> but I know that's you know that's him. The people I know that it's him. But he still has a lot of good professional content. But he does 
meld his family life and his professional. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 but one thing that's really hard for me in, in social media is, is people that focus on just their job and that's it, and they don't, they don't, they don't show that they're human. They don't show that little bit of extra to it. Um, for me, I don't really care that somebody knows or doesn't know that I'm at Cal Poly right now. But I posted it on Facebook and I posted it on, on, you know, Foursquare and all that stuff. But if I was famous and I had paparazzi and all these people following me and stuff, well, I probably wouldn't do all of that. I'd probably check out and say, hey, I just left, you know, Cal Poly Pona or you know, something like that. So yeah, I mean, I would definitely look at what you're working on and what types of things you're doing and then figure out what should I focus on or you know what's the you know, what's the what's the best way for me to convey who I am. And for me, who I am is I, I go to meetups, which are you know like groups like this where we all sit here and talk about you know the things that, that we're into. And um, I talk about my family. I talk about all those sorts of things, kind of mixed together. Gadgets, tech. Oh yeah, yeah. I talked about the webcam I bought. I talked about the laptop I bought. My experience at the Apple Store, whatever it is. You know, that's that's me. So, um, you know, for the people that are talking about sports and stuff, I would be uh, I'd be checking in that you were watching that sporting event, um, taking a screenshot of the screen of you know that win or whatever. Those types of things just add extra to it. Like for you and beer, I mean, taking pictures of labels of beer. Those people actually collect labels of beer, and by taking those pictures, you're sharing those things. I can do that. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, when, after I've recorded, of course, you know, right. side by side, it's beautiful. <laughs> Instagram, that you know, putting on Instagram, tagging it correctly, you know, all those types of techniques. That's uh, actually my box called Raven and Beer. It's my last name's Raven. Anyway. I like puns. I like puns. Okay, any um, another question? They can't stop us. But, um, so, like me personally, I'm not big on any media stuff. Like okay. I just have a Facebook, but I never go on it. Like I just got it when I was in high school, and I just really don't do anything. So I think what I'm getting from you guys is that you should put yourself out there, and you should be able to get other stuff. Like. My little sister has a Twitter, and I don't even have one. I was like, why do you have a Twitter? You're not famous. Like, I was like, Twitter, because we're like famous people. Like, who wants to know where you're going? <laughs> and then she's like, I just follow people. But I mean, I think being able, from you, from what I'm getting from you guys, it seems like you should put yourself out there, and like, but in an interested way and professional way, not just like. Well, also, people. it's attractive for those going for internships. Mm -hmm. Like if you're interned with me and I knew that you had like 5,000 followers of your age, I'd be like, would you mind posting this from the company for me? You guys, that's worth money. That's golden how many followers you have. And it's it's important. I contact most of my media now. I can't get you through email, but I'll get them on Facebook. So if you start making friends with initially media people that come through here, that's going to benefit you for life. Your contacts are what are important in PR. To go one, one before we switch, but yeah. one thing I would say to you is, is, uh, is find that one thing that you're really into, and write about it. It's going to be Twitter, it's going to be YouTube, whatever Education, it is that you're going to do, uh, government, be, and and tie all those things together. Nowadays, all of these social networks tie together in some way. Like if you log into MySpace, the new My, the new MySpace, <laughs> it asks you to log in using your Facebook credentials. <laughs> you know, all these things are tied together. So what, what I'm telling you is that I would take one of those or a couple of those social networks, tie them together, and then talk about something. If you're into fashion or if you're into cars or into video games or into whatever it is, start talking about that. Even if you're talking to a wall, talk to it. Because after a while, somebody's going to notice that you're talking to a wall and go, oh, she's actually talking about some pretty interesting stuff. And you'll start building a network there. And then when you go to get that job and they say, do you know Twitter? Do you know YouTube? Have you ever used uh, you know, stumble upon, you ever use, you know, Tumblr, you know, any of these things, you can say, yeah, I've used all of them and they're all tied together and here's my community. Another question. Yes. What do you guys think of Instagram? I was driving on my way to school and Chris FM and uh, Maya FM, they were both talking about Instagram at the same time. So I'm just kind of, what is that? What is it going to yeah, happen? I, I love Instagram. I love it too. It's my yummiest yeah. thing I love. I love Instagram. Right. It's yummy because a lot of people take pictures of it. Right. They do. <laughs> I think like how that's becoming like such a big thing. Like they don't like Twitter because you have to read stuff, but you see the pictures, and just people are more visual. Right. So I mean, like, how is that gonna come well, back in the next couple months? 
Thank sure. You. Well, one of the things like I was just speaking with her about right. is is you tie things together. So like you're saying that Twitter isn't you know doesn't do visual stuff. Well, Twitter actually does visual stuff. It does, yeah. So when you go and take a picture of something on Instagram, you tie it to your Twitter account, and it sends out a tweet saying, "I posted this on Instagram." So you're hitting two, two, you know, two different. Uh, and post to Facebook. Yeah, two different. Yeah, and post to Facebook. So you have it, you know, start going out to all these different places. I like it because you can build recognition for yourself by saying, you know, I just ate at this restaurant. Here's a picture of it. The restaurant will retreat you. They'll, they'll, they'll like it. They'll do whatever they do on on Instagram to, you know, promote that particular photograph that you did. Um, I think it's a I think it's a really good way of being able to. Uh, you know, and in the peer world, what I love is because the hashtags you're enabled to hashtag and you can be found then in the stream. And to me, that's very important when you're promoting a Twitter chat or any kind of chat. You just for searchability. I love it. I also love social cam. That's my new favorite candy. I love um, a lot of corporations are using that to push out your videos. A lot of MGM Entertainment. There's tons of, of companies use it. It's, I, I drive in and shoot my videos on that, and then pushes it right quickly, edits it, puts it right on my Facebook, puts it right out to Twitter. Um, so social cam is good too, corporate PR. What about like, so because my Facebook, it's like highly security, like highest maximum, and I'm really not into having everything connected just because of the Facebook thing that they're going to like post for me and stuff. Mm. And so what do I do as a PR person? Do I have to make myself or can I you do can a separate? You can make yourself a business page, yeah. Can, yeah. I, can I do a separate? Okay, yeah, you make a business team? page. Well, there's, there's, there's two ways. And I actually noticed that, and I was going to mention that today, is that um, like your, uh, you know, your organization has it as a person mm -hmm. is on Facebook, not a, not a group or a page or whatever. And I, I bet at some point, the reason why you did that was because those other things didn't exist at that point. Right. Yeah. Um, so what I would what what comment on that would be that uh, by by building a, building another persona would be okay, but I'd probably just go and make another page, make an actual page, yeah. a Facebook page itself that talks about you. So pretend that you're a celebrity. That's what celebrities do. They have a Facebook account and then they have a Facebook page, and that Facebook page can be managed by other people. Which would be like their PR person. So Cindy would have access to some, you know, celebrities' uh, Facebook page, and she'd be able to manage their post on behalf of them, them. All that stuff. She does it all the, all day long. Okay. So I, that's the way I would start off. So make a page about myself. A business page yeah. from my yep. profile. That's that Jason's up there. It's that's his business page. I have my personal. I have a business page, but I don't do anything. I'm, just, I'm still using my personal too much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, my brand is me. Yeah. And I had a hard time, you know, actually starting a business that's not called me. <laughs> that's called, you know, I, I use my last name at least, but um, you know, uh, Tucker Pro, you know, Web. That's the the URL for the Facebook page. I built that built that Facebook page. I post as myself as well as posting as um, my company. I kind of use the royal we, where it's like, you know, we're at Cal Poly talking today, and I post that on there. So yeah, that's the way I would go. Yeah, about. he's just good to follow to learn from him, guys, because he's at all these new meetings and conferences. I'm like, Jason, how did you do that? That's pretty cool, you know. So he's and he's very helpful, as you can tell. Um, I'm a first year, but I'm obsessed with Disney, and I would love. Oh to gosh, here we go. I knew. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted the group. <laughs> Um, and I have a Tumblr account, and anybody on my Tumblr can definitely tell that I want to be with Disney. Good. I'm always like trying to apply for Disney, but um, I just recently turned 18, so they wouldn't hire me before. But um, like I'm trying to best do everything, but I don't know when the right time would be to go for an internship. With they do a great college program. Yeah, they do. Yeah. An awesome they have college a program. program. Twitter yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, I would I would look into that. But, yeah. The thing about that though is that sometimes because I have a friend that went through that because I looked it up too. So. <laughs> um, but she she they, they cool. had her transfer. To, she's from California too, but they had her transfer to Florida. There's oh darn! Yeah. <laughs> no, but like like it's like yeah they pay you and they give you like money for all that and stuff, but it's a really difficult transition. And if I want to go to school too, like it's just hard. Mm -hmm. So I don't. I, I, I wanted to like make sure that I stayed in California, but I don't know if like that's possible to do that while I'm still going to class, you know? Yeah. Get your education. Yeah. And then, yeah, you can, yeah. Don't, yeah. You'll be fine. You're gonna, he knows a bunch of people connected. You're going to be fine.
There's so many Disney people and probably oh, yeah. in, in the yeah. hall. <laughs> but if, if you, That's if so you, cool. if I would even approach it anyhow, just to see if there's if there's something that you can do and that you could specify. Yeah, I'd really like to stay in California. I'm already enrolled in school. I already yeah. want to keep, you know, going here. It could probably work something out for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of like the about me pages. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, what do you guys think about those? Because like you can connect all these social media on one site and like add a tiny URL to like your resume or your business cards or something. Oh my gosh. I like them. Oh. I like them. I but I like them on my own domain. Yeah. I'm when 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 my when my youngest daughter was born, I purchased the domain name the day that she was born of her name. You know, I, I purchased her first name and middle name, and then first name and last name. You know, it's like, well, she's going to get married at some point, so, you know, <laughs> what's going to happen here? So, for me, I have uh, jasontucker.us. That's my, you know, my place that has all of my information. Because your name with all is pretty linking. well known, so you don't have a double Yeah, I have a, I have a, football, I have a football player with the same name as me, and him and I compete nonstop over, you know, who, Who's going to be the top, uh, top ranking on on, uh, yeah. on Google? Unique, so I feel like yeah, if you're pretty, if you're neat, unique, unique, yeah. it's great. But I would I'd get the domain name, and then I would set up one of those pages. And there's tons of templates that you could use out there that will do pretty much what like a, you know, about the about.me pages yeah. and, and flavor.me and all those different services. It's tons of own your own brand, own your own domain, and make sure that you have ownership of all that stuff. If you're using somebody else's stuff, like I hear companies all the time say. Oh, you know, because I build websites, so I, I approach them and say, "Well, can I build your website?" Oh, I already have a Facebook page. Well, that's great until Facebook dies. Yeah. Yeah. Or I already have a MySpace page. Well, MySpace died and was resurrected. Now it can, can turned into something totally different. Yeah. So I would put if you're going to put all your eggs in one basket, put them in a basket that you actually own. Okay. Yeah, best thing to do. How many names did you buy for your daughter? Um, I have. One, two, three, four. I have four for each, four for each kid. I have three kids. Oh, okay. And yeah. then how long does it take? Because I was trying to do one for my daughter and then also for uh, myself, but I wasn't sure like minutes. Talk. You can register. I can register it on my phone. Really? And have it ready and Is it ready to go. Is the one that you were telling us earlier? The domain name. Um, what was the title of it? Uh, name check. Name check. Uh, uh, name check's just for like. You know, if you're spitballing an idea of like, uh, you know, some company name or something, you want to just do a search and see, is right. it available everywhere? That's so the way to do it. So domain name is what I'm going to go under. Is it .com? Yeah, you could go. Because uh, I always Google and there's like five domain right. names with different things, and you're like, what's real, what's not. Yeah. So I'd um, rather get that from you. You go through. Easy. Yeah, you go through a, a registrar is what they call it. So okay. you could go through if you if you want to go through GoDaddy, you could go through them. You could go through Hover.com, which is uh, a little bit. Better uh, the way all these I think of it. One of those types of services. Do a quick search for your name and then buy that domain name. Um, if you're not married, I'd probably get your first name and middle name. Why not? Yeah. Um, if you're already married, well, at that point, you know, get your married name and get that get that set up. But just get something that you can own and then get a web hosting account. You can get them for like you know five bucks a month through various places and then set up a website there. If you help with that, let me know. Back and he'll do a whole <laughs> shop on it. Yeah. Well, when people come one day and do headshots, do everything, get you guys looking all good. Yeah. All right, so we got time for about one more question. We don't want anybody to be late to their 1 o'clock classes. No, we don't. It's about 12.45 right now. So who's going to who's gonna finish us off here? <laughs> right. Okay, how do you guys feel about, like, or what suggestions can you make about using social media with, like, grassroots efforts and, like, activism and things that way? The social media has changed the world. It's toppled down dynasties and governments and taken dictators out. It is the most, I can't imagine life without them now. And it's extremely valuable for grassroots efforts, fundraising efforts, now how simple it is to make it an event and share it. You can globally get money. Um, you guys know about the Kickstarter programs? Yeah. How awesome is that, right? That if you want to help a, a band make their CD or someone else, uh, you know, raise money for, I don't, gosh, so many great efforts. Digging wells, you can invest in that. Um, it's just, just opened up the world of opportunity for reach and to have your own message. And actually to shoot vid video and actually see what this is, where you're donating the money. You're not like blindly handing money over anymore to companies. And, uh, 
I think it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it it's for it's free as long as your yeah. time is free. <laughs> so if your time's free and you wanna you wanna invest in something like really you know put your heart and soul to something, um, setting up a Twitter account, setting up a you know, Facebook uh, page, setting up you know all these different services take a matter of minutes for each one of them. And that's and why then, it's important to build your communities. Yeah. The larger community you have, the more people you have to share with your causes. Yeah, because you just bolted on your community onto somebody else's or on the one that you're you're now starting. Mm -hmm. Advertising on Facebook and Twitter, I've been looking oh, into so it for my job. Awesome. Um, yeah. it's so awesome. It's cheap. Ball. It's so uh, cheap. You, like, say you do a Twitter advertising campaign for your grassroots program, you pay per follow. Like, so per person that follows you, so you only pay for the results that you get, really. And yeah. it's fantastic. And for Facebook, you can say, I'm going to spend $2 a day. You just do that, you can precise something you're targeting. It's amazing. Facebook's I, working I, to improve it even more. Oh, I love it. I've had great results on Facebook. And where do you you do ads? Um, I do ads on Facebook for my own company, and I, you know, I, I, the demographics I want are people to have money. <laughs> so you can go through and say, I want these people, and I want this type of business, and everybody else doesn't get to see my ad. <laughs> and also, you guys, you can be making money if you've got a thriving website or a blog in your area. You should be going after your Google ads, and you can be making some money back if you use, you know, your crafting. Jason knows how to do all that stuff. I don't. <laughs> but yeah, you can get some money on your return. All right, so final words? If you guys don't reach out to me, I can't help you. So I'm totally here for you, no matter how long you're in school or not in school. I'm here forever. And how can they do that? Uh, like me uh, on Facebook. It's the easiest way to find me there, Cindy Ronthoni. And Sean knows how to reach me. Diane knows how to get me. Um, I'm always available. Right. I always tell people to play. If you're not playing, you're not going to figure it out. And, yeah, you're not going to make a mistake. And like I was telling, saying before, you know, you got to find those one or two little things that you're into and focus on that and start writing about it. Even if you're going to throw it away a couple years later, it doesn't matter. As long as you you've understood how those technologies work, you're better off than everybody else. All right. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Yeah. All right. That'll do it for our meeting today. Those of you that have a class at one o'clock, feel free to bolt on out the door. I don't want to keep you. If you want